in the name of allah the rahman and the rahim dear students assalamu alaikum today we are taking uh, history of english literature class today's lecture is on henry fielding's contribution to english novel like we have discussed samuel richardson contribution to english literature especially to the novel so today we are taking class that is specially on henry fielding's contribution okay first of all i'll give you the outline of the lesson and this lesson we will study brief biography of the novelist henry fielding his works features of his writing his greatness like uh, is a father of english novel okay Uh, Henry Fielding he was born in 1707 and was died in 1754 was a great english writer in the 1730s he wrote political plays it is his first phase of writing that he wrote he first uh, like took start to write political plays in these plays he is making fun upon the government he is laughing at the government okay so then he wrote he then he removed these elements of laughing from his plays from his political plays why because when strict actions uh, were taken against him by the government of that very time so then he removed he eradicate these elements these laughing elements these like uh, funny ele elements from his uh, political plays so uh, like in second phase he began to write novel in second phase like he he first attempted to wrote political plays to record political plays but later on uh, when he was criticized by the government by the people that he made a joke at the government okay the like uh, uh, the activities uh, uh, taken by the government so in second phase he began to write novel now he was mature enough in writing like uh, he has the style of uh, like funny writing he is the greatest of english novelist he is considered the greatest novelist okay among others like according to hudson critic very known critic he is saying he remarked about henry fielding has he was a man of very different type like he was a man of very different nature different type di different style he he had taken uh, while writing his novels he was while while vigorous while means uh, very energetic full of energy very energetic okay very active vigorous and somewhat coarse in nature somewhat uh, like uh, rough and tough in nature uh, while writing his novels he uh, did not take the very like smart or soft or smooth elements from the life but he was coarse in nature he was not smooth okay in his writing his knowledge of life was as wide as richardson was narrow like the students we have discussed that is a whole samuel richardson wrote three novels okay his first famous work is pamela okay a virtue rewarded so this is his first work he he was also a man that uh, uh, who understand who was like uh, the master of uh, psychology okay he was a psychologist especially he need uh, women psychology a lot but his knowledge was very narrow his knowledge was too limited when we uh, when we compares his knowledge okay when we compare his knowledge with uh, Uh, like uh, henry fielding so then he uh, became very narrow very limited uh, range of vocabulary very limited range of characters 
uh, Samuel Richardson has uh, taken for his writing of novels. So these were two, like uh, they were uh, from the same age, they were contemporary, we can say, but uh, um, between them, Henry Fielding was very great, okay? Above Richardson was Henry Fielding. Now, uh, there are some characteristics upon these, we can say that Henry Fielding was great than that of uh, Richardson. Like uh, coarseness, yes, we have discussed that roughness and toughness is there, coarseness is there in uh, Henry Fielding writings, okay, in his novels, in his political plays, like we said that, we mentioned that he, uh, like uh, fun, he created fun upon the government of that very time, he laughed, uh, like uh, he, he, he made people to laugh at the government, okay, uh, what was like a uh, role taken by the government. So he was rough and tough uh, in his writing, eh, eh, as was his nature. So his nature, his uh, like uh, nature of his life was reflected in his writing also. Lake of smoothness and softness, uh, yes, is there. Like these, uh, like, like uh, he used such elements through which we can say, through which uh, readers can like uh, uh, take these uh, uh, these characteristics like we can realize or recognize these elements okay in his writings like while we, when we are reading his novels such like elements such words structured uh, used by him that uh, structure is very coarse very rough and tough uh, so lake of smoothness and uh, softness is there uh, critics, they are saying that it was um, by his nature, okay, nature was reflected. Uh, like their students, whenever a writer is writing or a novelist is uh, like uh, uh, writing a novel, okay, he is writing not in vacuum, he is, not, he is writing not for vacuum, not in vacuum, uh, not for like angels, uh, like uh, uh, for other uh, beings but he or uh, she is writing for uh, human beings, okay? He lives uh, among human being and he is writing for human being, okay? So he is writing life. He is taking uh, characters for his novel from life. So uh, uh, like, uh, for example, if a writer is uh, like uh, going, he is passing through very uh, tough and rough situations through very difficult, uh, through very like uh, 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 difficult and uh, harsh situations. So there would be, the possibility is there, uh, like probability is there, he will be recording these harshness, like the harsh element of the life, the very dark side will be recorded by him in his writings. So likewise, uh, by nature, uh, um, Henry Fielding was a uh, rough and tough, okay? So that's why his writing is also uh, the reflection of that very nature, which is rough, which is coarse, which is tough. Uh, there is lack uh, of smoothness and softness, okay? Somewhat he like amalgamate, uh, amalgamated these two elements, uh, like in his uh, last play, in his last novel, he, uh, he mixed these two elements, okay? Vigorous, he was very vigorous, very active, full of energy, energetic man. So that's why he like um, recorded each and everything. Minute detail of life is provided by him in his writing because he uh, had very keen observation of the life so he was very active and energetic for the uh, representation, for the recording of uh, life. So that's why uh, these elements are there. Hilarious, yes, uh, by nature he was hilarious, extreme, uh, extremely funny, like we have discussed that he, uh, uh, like you know that when the man is creating, when a man is uh, like uh, laughing at the government, 
at the very powerful uh, uh, like uh, commissions okay at the uh, like um, bureaucrat of that very time he was laughing so what will be the uh, like uh, condition or state of the common man so uh, this is uh, like his he was hilarious in nature enough uh, that's why he was laughing at the government vulgarity rudeness is there such elements are there which rep represent uh, remember students in tom jones such elements are there like uh, very vulgar language is used by him in his writing laughing laughing at life yes laughing at life means that he was laughing at the age he was laughing at that very time in which he lived characters in his novels are from different classes of society and they are throb with life like he took characters from different uh, straight uh, straight of society from upper class lower class lower middle class upper upper class upper lower middle class so these all classes are in his uh, study were in his studied he uh, like uh, uh, observed all classes in his lifetime and he recorded in he in he written uh these things in his uh, novels okay so characters in his novels are from character means the actors the actress the heroine hero in heroine okay people who are involved in his novels so they were from different classes of the society like he he combined he amalgamated these all characters that what will be the situation if all uh, uh, classes people of the society when they are living together so what will be the condition if upper class people are there and lower class people are there in his uh, writings uh, are they are living together so ultimately then we can realize that what what will be the conditions like what will be the situation of that very time of that very society of that very like uh, community social community either it will be very disturbed by the upper class and uh, the lower class will be badly affected by the activities by the works by the uh, like uh, uh, orders of the upper class by the by the powerful people so he regarded these all things to bring together all uh, classes of uh, society and then uh, so then look at them that how they are behaving how they are like uh, acting and how they are served by others okay so that's why he he selected all classes of the society for his writing uh, especially for the writing of novel realism is there yes he was very real what was seen by him uh, was recorded by him okay as he as he look at life Uh, in such a manner he recorded life okay social satire is there yes he is making satire on the society and the age and the government and the people upper class lower class by men and women okay he is laughing at all the uh, like uh, uh, communities henry fielding greatness now he was delight in physical beauty yes he he loves uh, like physical beauty so physical beauty is associated with women with female okay so he was delighted in the physical beauty especially female beauty he he liked the beauty of female so he was a masculine writer yes so you like male they they love female they 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 have delightness in physical beauty so uh, that's why he is considered a masculine writer he does not have the delicacy of richardson yes yes as we have mentioned that there was coarseness coarseness was there roughness rough and toughness uh, like a lake of smoothness and softness is there in, in his writing so likewise he does not have the delicacy of richardson like samuel richardson he he was very delicate he selected materials he selected uh, elements uh, very carefully very tactfully so 
it was not uh, like this element was not present in Henry Fielding. So he was not much careful, was not enough careful while writing uh, his novels. It may be said that it is not Richardson who is the father of English novel. It is in fact Henry Fielding, okay? In fact, in reality, Henry Fielding is considered the father of English novel, okay? It was Henry Fielding who contributed a lot and who brought novel to the front, okay? So that's why he is considered the real father, the true father of English novel. It is in fact Henry Fielding as for Richardson is the mother of English novel. So, according to books, according to history of English le le literature writing, according to David Dishes, or according to a history of English literature by Dr. T. Singh, these, in these all books, there is a statement that Richardson is the mother of English novel. And who is the father? Henry Fielding is the father of English novel. Why? because of these elements, because of his greatness, because of his writing style, because of his characteristics. So his works, first novel he wrote, Jos Joseph Andrews, okay? Joseph Andrews is the first novel. It was written in 1742, okay? It is considered a parody of Pamela. Pamela is the very famous work of Richardson. So this is a parody, okay? This is like uh, uh, making fun. He made a fun of Pamela. Why? Because um, uh, satire over the false sentimentality and conventional virtue of Richardson's heroine Pamela. Like uh, Pamela is also the uh, Pamela is the title of the novel and, uh, and also the, uh, the main character of the novel okay so Richardson did what while uh, representing Pamela Pamela is not the true representation of virtue okay it is uh, the the false sentimentality and conventional virtue of Richardson heroine Pamela like she is not a virtuous character okay she has not a virtuous character <laughs> she is not a real like uh, uh, character but it was adopted by Richardson and now uh, in Joseph and Reeves which is uh, the first novel of uh, Henry Fielding he is making uh, fun he is uh, laughing at the novel at the characters of the Pamela okay he is making, he, he is criticizing and satire over the false sentimentality in conventional virtue of Richardson's heroine in Pamela. Like he is judging the criteria of the Richardson's, what he did in Pamela, okay? He is like uh, making comparison or he is uh, dropping, okay, the very virtuous elements from the Richardson's uh, heroine. The hero of the novel is supposed brother of Pamela, like in Joseph, Joseph in Reeve is considered the supposed brother of Pamela and he is also a domestic servant, okay, he is servant. So this is his first work, Joseph in Reeves was followed by Tom Jones, the history of Tom Jones and Amelia, okay, this is the third novel. Now after uh, uh, Joseph in Reeves, there is another important work of Henry Fielding, Jonathan Wild the Great in 1743, it was written by Henry Fielding. This is considered by critic a uh, fictional work, okay, did by uh, Henry Fielding. It is a typical example of picaresque novel, you should study by your own that what is meant by picaresque novel, okay? Then you will be able to understand that uh, uh, how Jonathan Wilde the Great is a picaresque novel. Here he narrates, he means, uh, Henry Fielding narrates the story of Rock, okay? Rock means a person who behave very badly, 
like a bad character is represented by him in his uh, like uh, uh, work Jonathan Wild the Great okay a dishonest man or immoral man is represented in uh, represented in this work Tom Jones very famous work by Henry Fielding dear students if you have time enough uh, free time then you should uh, read at least once the uh, history of Tom Jones. Tom Jones novel, Tom Jones is the short name and the full name of this novel is the history of Tom Jones in 1749, okay? It was studied by him in 1746 and completed in 1749. He provided a glowing model of a well-constructed plot Yes, this is uh, Henry Fielding's greatness that he provided a well constructed plot. He like uh, he provided example or model of well constructed plot. He is considered that he was a master of plot. No one did before such uh, things like no one did uh, constructed construct such plot uh, but it was in the hand of Henry Fielding that he constructed a well uh, plot okay a very good plot according to a very great critic T S S T Coleridge okay Samuel Taylor Coleridge Tom Jones along with Sophocles Oedipus the King and Ben Johnson's uh, the alchemist okay Sophocles written Sophocles wrote Oedipus the king and Ben Johnson wrote the alchemist okay uh, Oedipus the king and uh, the alchemist along with these two works these two great works okay one of the uh, uh, like works is uh, uh, Tom Jones of the three works of the world literature we have perfectly constructed plots like before uh, Richard uh, before Henry Fielding Oedipus Rex a plot was considered very well perfectly constructed and then Ben Johnson constructed the alchemist plot perfectly and then Henry Fielding came and he uh, has given Tom Jones with very perfectly constructed plot. So this novel is famous for the construction of plot especially. Tom Jones uh, was a founding boy. Yes, Tom Jones is uh, one of the characters in this uh, novel, Tom Jones, okay? So uh, he is like, it, it's a historical novel, you, we can say one way. Okay, on the other hand, it is like the description of uh, the society, okay. So, Tom Jones was a founding boy. No one need at the uh, very uh, beginning of the novel that who was Tom Jones or who uh, were the father and mother of the Tom Jones, but he was a found founding boy. It has an epic and dramatic qualities, yes great qualities uh, dramatic qualities uh, he had had put in this novel a number of adventures are there he skillfully brought to the climax like number of adventures a series of adventures are there and he skillfully organized these adventures till the climax till the very like till the end of the novel complicated plot Yes, he constructed this uh, novel in very complicated plot. Unity is there. It is his greatness that he provided uh, unity to all of the uh, series of the uh, things, okay, in this novel, in Tom Jones. He is, he is not moralizing things. He is saying, Tom, uh, Henry Fielding is saying, do good not for the reward, do good not for the reward. Like Richardson's, without making a deliberate, a deliberate effort at moralizing, like Richardson, Fielding suggests 
a deeper moral lesson that one should do good not for the reward but for the satisfaction of doing so like he is not uh, doing things for the reward like richardson's he was moralizing things for the reward he was like uh, he was busy to moralize things to do good things for the reward for the receiving of rewards but he is saying that do not do okay do not do good things for the reward but do good things for what for the satisfaction of good doing good to satisfy yourself to satisfy your inner self okay that i am doing good things for the satisfaction of good amelia it's it is his last novel it was written in 1741 and his uh, like um, death is in 14 is uh, 1754 so um, in 1751 Uh, he wrote this novel it, it is his uh, last work it is a story of a good wife in contrast with unworthy husband like it is the story of a good wife that her husband was a uh, unworthy uh, person and uh, how he behaved how he like um, lived a life with that very unworthy husband it is written in mild tone like very slight tone very low tone very soft tone it is written in contrast to coase attitude to life here he became soft hearted soft hearted like dear students we all we are human beings we have a uh, tough and rough nature like jab aadmi jawan hota hai na तो बहुत मस्ती में होता है ठीक है वो सब कुछ कर सकता है लेकिन आदमी जब बूढ़ा हो जाता है उसकी फीलिंग्स उसकी वो जो जो मतलब जॉइनेस है ठीक है वो आहिस्ता आहिस्ता लाइक हम कहते हैं कि डल जाते हैं तो द सेम थिंग हैपेंड विद हेनरी फील्डिंग लाइक इन हिज यंग एज ही रोट अ लॉट ही वॉज बिजी टू मेक फन टू क्रिएट जोक ओके Uh, on others but uh, he was very coarse tough enough rough but now he his attitude was completely changed in his like uh, last years so that's why he is considered in contrast to coarse attitude to life here he became soft hearted innocent and helpless people like female they always they have nothing okay they 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 always see for something for food for money for other like um, um, accessories they always take help from uh, from men okay from their husbands they are taking help so they have nothing they they, they can't afford like uh, domestic uh, necessities but they are taking help from others so that's why he represented all these things and he was li- like soft hearted now he was not uh, that very famous uh, dear students we have studied henry fielding that he was uh, he uh, he was very uh, great novelist and he his great contribution uh, to english novel is that he put it on a stable footing yes he uh, has given Uh, like good construction he has given model for others uh, for other novelist he is called the father of english novel because he was the first to give genuine picture of men and women of his age without moralizing over their vices and virtues like he represented he gave us the true picture of that very life now in their students it is literature is it is a form of literature and literature we we are seeing that literature is the reflection of life okay so uh, literature takes material from life and discussing life so a true man a true writer is uh, such a writer who create uh, who creates uh, like 
true pictures of life, who represents life in true sense. So the same was done by uh, Henry Fielding. Dear students, uh, if you have any question, any comment you can ask, please, you are welcome to ask questions. Be careful about your future. You should study by your own and other books regarding the contribution of Henry Fielding and Richardson's. You should make compare and contrast, okay, that what were the good qualities of Samuel Richardson's and what are the greatest are uh, great qualities of Henry Fielding while writing a novel. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Best of luck. Assalamu